Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Darkville here. Welcome to a Heart of the Swarm replay cast. We've got a really, really interesting TVP match coming up. I'm just trying to get rid of this damn menu bar, but it's not going away. Why isn't it going away? I don't know why it's not. Uh, hang on. Ah, there we go. Alright, cool. Fixed it. Um, I am using like a bit of a different setup. I have been for the past few casts. We're using OBS to record everything. I was previously using uh, XSplit because that was just what I was rolling with. But uh, a big thanks to uh, Mr. Kieran Clark who helped me out with getting OBS set up and everything. And for the past few weeks, and uh, as I said, for the past few casts, I have been using OBS, which is uh, it's quite a lot smoother and quite a lot nicer to set up. And there's a few various little things that uh, are a bit nicer about OBS, not to mention the fact that it's free. It's got a lot of community support, all that kind of cool stuff. So check out OBS if you want to start streaming. And uh, there's a lot of people who can help you out with that. But anyway, let's talk about our game here today. It is a TVP on Akalon Waste, a map that has been in the map pool for a very long time. I sincerely hope that this and Belshia get removed from the map pool because we're, you know, it's it's sort of getting a bit long in the teeth these days, uh, these two two maps in particular, but let's talk about our players. Down here in the bottom right hand side is our Red Terran player, currently playing for Team Deadly Gaming. He's my current Terran featured stream of the month, of course, you can find out more about that over on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash duckville.casting. It is Zerzinski. Now, uh, Mr. Zerz is a player from uh, the UK, a Scottish Terran player. Now, if you have been, uh, if you've actually read uh, the the details about this featured stream of the month and and our Terran player here, he's uh, he's actually a mech player and does mech in almost pretty much every single matchup. If you watch his stream, he does stream regularly. You can find him over on twitchtv slash Zerzinski. and um, he actually has some really really cool and interesting play. It's like really really intriguing to watch how uh, how the games go. One thing which a lot of people will uh, recognize about uh, mech play is it can be very turtly, it can take a lot of time um, so quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of our Terran players' uh, matches go for a very long time. It's very common to see, uh, you know, above 40, 40 minutes or so, sometimes even 50 minutes, um, sometimes even extending to almost two hour gameplay. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for some really interesting, um, some insight into how to play mech, how to play very late game, like extreme late game, uh, in TVT, TVP, and TVZ, all the matchups there. Uh, certainly go and check out Zerzinski's stream because it's uh, it's really, really good stuff to watch. And of course, um, we do have his opponent up here going for a very quick expansion. Up at the top left-hand side is our Blue Protoss player, Chvol. Yep. It's kind of it's kind of some interesting names for me to pronounce here, but uh, yeah, he's going to be our blue protoss here. This is uh, high masters. Uh, well, these two players are both uh, ranked in high masters at the moment on the US server. Zazinski actually uh, picks up quite a lot of games against GM players and uh, regularly does quite well against them. It's actually it's it's really intriguing to watch a player who is extremely comfortable with playing out, you know hour long or more games and is just comfortable to play, sit there for, you know, quite a while, build up a, a you know, a really tanky sort of turtly army, both tanky in the literal and, uh, you know, non-literal kind of sense of the word, but, um, it's really intriguing to watch because you just see over time players uh, who play against mech just slowly get really uh, they get really frustrated trying to deal with this kind of play because as uh, as I've mentioned in a lot of previous uh, Terran mech casts before is that it's a style that is extremely hard to execute properly but if you can execute it properly it can be extremely deadly so it's something that um you know is is of course you know through the start through the well, i guess the entirety of starcraft 2 we rarely ever see people going for mech styles there's uh, of course goody a uh, stalwart who has been playing mech for quite a long time actually stopped playing it for a little bit just because it got incredibly predictable people would just start to meta and uh, just crush him at various times here but um you know it's a style that it has has seen very 
very little usage and uh, Blizzard at the moment, they are looking to put out a patch that is going to increase the uh, the possible versatility a little bit of mech play in that, uh, you know, we'll have the change to the ship weapons is going to be added into vehicle weapons. So it'll go back to a uh, pre-release Heart of the Swarm style where it was actually used as a double upgrade back uh, very early on in the beta for Heart of the Swarm. But uh, it kind of makes transitioning in, uh, in mech styles a little bit more possible and hopefully I, one thing which I'm sure everyone will love to see is that it will sort of break up TVZ a little bit more. People may not necessarily be going the Terran Terra train all the time. The uh, the Marine Medivac Mine style, which is basically the only thing you see at high level TVZ these days. But enough about that sort of stuff. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about our Pro Tools player here. He has, as we said, started up. He got that expansion down nice and swiftly. He's also got a Robo and a couple more gates about to go down. A protective cannon in the mineral line here, just to make sure the possibility of uh, Hellion runbys do not get too much damage done, but Zazinski now heads inside. The natural gets a few probe kills here. Not too badly done, as we can see three more make it inside the main base, grabbing a couple of those probe kills. He should get a total, I think it's about, yeah, around about 10 in total here. And uh, there you go. So he does get a little bit of damage done, and this is something which uh, is very, uh, very distinctive of mech styles. Is that a lot of the time at the start, you know, um, when people started using mech in TVZ, you started saying, "All right, well, you need to get some damage done with Blue Flame Hellions or something like that right at the start of the match, because otherwise a Zerg player is just going to out macro you and move into a position where they can just smash you every time." So this is something which does permeate through TV, TVZ and TVP quite a lot. You'll see a lot of players will try and send out some Hellions and uh, or Hellions or Hellbat drops even which is why we did see that uh, the cannon being built in the middle line here but it's a very common thing to see people just try and get a little bit of harassment going at the start it allows you to catch up in the work account as well because of course Protoss will generally try and uh, dive ahead because they are able to chrono boost out all of their workers we can see the current work account is relatively even at the moment but uh, all of this leads to a point where the Terran is nice and safe inside their, their two bases uh, into three of course later on in the game but um it lets them move into a macro position where they know they've slowed down their their opponent's economy a little bit as we can see here the probe count is uh is even right now and it means that the terror player can be comfortable in moving forward with a very slow but powerful tech that's the key with mech is it's very slow but it is very powerful and it also is very tactically demanding just because of positioning and of course uh, being aware of where your opponents are out of the map we've got uh, Zazinski actually pushing forwards he's gonna he's got a winner mine that's gonna get picked off here but another one did make it inside the third base this is something which I always love to see but I rarely ever get to see in uh, in Terran games is people actually using mines a little bit more as uh, sort of a just a scouting and also a defensive sort of unit but um we can see now that Chvol has actually picked up quite a lot of his stalkers here. He's got Blink on the way, he wants to get very mobile. He's also got plus one on weapons, also on the way. He's already got plus one to armor, which is always nice. But uh, in this sort of matchup, if you're a Protoss player and you ever you ever come up against mech, you can sort of identify it by a few things. Not only those Hellions that you see earlier on in the game, but just, well, the fact of any tanks. is It's kind of rare to see tanks these days in uh, in TVP at all. But of course, once you get that Observer in, you see all of those factories. You say, all right, cool, it's mech time. What are we going to do about this? There's a few different schools of thought, I think, um, as to the best ways to do it. I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go over a couple. And then you can sort of decide for yourself which uh, which you would rather go for. One particular school of thought is to utilize Blink Stalkers. Blink around, be very mobile, use warp prisms dropping in on all sorts of uh, parts of the map. You know, you can uh, you can bring in a warp prism, bring in some zealots, do some harassment to the mineral line while back over on the, on the other side. You're actually pushing into the main base with some Blink Stalkers, sniping down things. What you really want to do with that kind of uh, that kind of uh, strategy is you want to slow down the production of the Terran. You want to be able to snipe off some of these factories if possible, cut down their work account a little bit, and uh, just sort of do the reverse of what we saw just before with Zuzinski, which was to uh, move out and try and blow up your opponent's economy a little bit. So those are the, that's that's one particular way that you can try and deal with it. Other kinds of ways that you that you certainly can try and combat mech is to, you can, well, you can obviously just not let it get to a point where it's very deadly. 
um, by doing two base pushes, you can do, uh, you know, various sorts of immortal busts and, uh, you know, various things with charge lots and archons. That kind of stuff can be a little bit, uh, a little bit overbearing to deal with sometimes. But, um, you know, generally, you, you, it is always good to try and uh, deal with mech before it gets to its powerful point, especially in the hands of such a well-versed player like Zerzinski. So, it's, uh, that's another particular way you can go at it. Another way which uh, Chival seems to be going for here is to grab a third base really quickly. I would even advocate grabbing a fourth base really, really quickly because as we said before, one of the really, really, uh, one of the powerful yet a bit of a double-edged sword thing about mech is that it is very slow. It's very, very turtly. As we can see here, these tanks, all very slow. Hellbats, when they're in, obviously, in Hellbat mode, they are uh, very slow. Once the Thors start coming out, they too are quite quite slow, um, and then when you move up to things like the uh, like the battle cruisers and that kind of stage of TVP mech, they are also a little bit slow. Of course, faster than tanks and thors, but still a little bit slow. So that is uh, another good way to do it, is to expand quickly and get a lot of upgrades. Try and keep ahead of your opponent because, of course, uh, Protoss upgrades are really, really handy. Shields and armor are really good at deflecting shots, or not deflecting, but absorbing shots so that, uh, you know, the tanks with their slow rate of fire, they don't automatically just uh, blow up all of your units here. But as you can see, Zerzinski has now taken his third base. He's got a uh, pretty decent economy running right now, sitting up there at 63 SCVs out. He's, of course, got quite a few mules coming through. Extra command centers being built up. We've got the Hellbats here as well, just looking to, uh, we'll probably see them get their blue flame upgrade. Yeah, I think they've already got that. Very nicely done. And uh, what this means is that he will have a little bit of, uh, you know, he has a really good protective force against any kind of composition that comes through. Now, one thing that you do see here from Zerzinski is the ghosts. The ghosts have started to come out. These guys never under underestimate the ghosts. They can be extremely powerful. If you can snipe out observers, they can sit there in cloak. And I'm not even kidding. You can see ghosts, like a big group of ghosts, smash down a colossi just because they, uh, you know, the colossus can't really shoot them or anything like that. And uh, watching ghosts shoot down colossi is, is probably one of the funniest things of uh, StarCraft 2. But as you can see here, Zerzinski playing a really, really, uh, really strong kind of defensive game here. Turrets coming across the backside of his base. We can also see just across, uh, across on this side, there isn't too much. I'm a little bit surprised that he hasn't set that up just yet. But what he does have is a nicely placed uh, sensor tower, just keeping an eye on what's coming through at the front door here. So this gives him a good, uh, a good read on what's going on. Just that SCV is having a little bit of break there, leaving uh, only two in the... Uh, in the extractor there, or not extractor, the refinery, I should say. But um, we can see now that Cheval is setting up for the... Uh, he's very much setting up for a late game. We've got double robos all prepared. We'll probably get some Stargates up. There they are. The Templar Archives is also on the way now as well. He's continuing to bring out the upgrades. And personally, if I have to deal with mech, I love grabbing some upgrades. Like getting extra upgrades. Heck, I'd even say go for three forges to pick up your shields, your armor, and your weapons as swiftly as possible. Because once you get them, you can uh, put yourself in a really good position when it comes to battling against the... Terran mech army, which is of course very very powerful very strong as we can see these uh, these siege tanks They already do 28 damage versus armored targets and that's just with plus one on their weapons Then you, you sort of discount the facts that that uh, ghost can EMP your shields down And it can be a very very tough ask to try and deal with a mech army once it starts to pick up and get into really uh, You know into full steam but Chival, he's, uh, he's finally getting his fourth base. I would have loved to see this a little bit earlier, though, just to make sure that he can put his economy in a better position. He's currently sitting on his own upgrades right now of 2-1. So he's slowly picking them up as we go. We, we've still got, yeah, still waiting on some more upgrades to come out. But uh, he is going to start on the air upgrades right now. Fleet Beacon is on the way. And uh, with his double Robo, double Stargate, he's getting prepared for that late game. I... Again, I would kind of love to see a, uh, a Protoss player go go a lot harder on the upgrades. It's it's rare that you'll ever see Terran players move out on two bases or three with their mech. Oh, obviously, once you get to three, it's a little bit easier to replenish your army, but... Um, the thing with mech is that if you lose a large army, it can be very, very hard to replace it. It's it's such a slow, cumbersome, and very costly kind of army to uh, replenish that it can be very, uh, I, I suppose, it's it's a bit of a trouble to resupply yourself until you set up on three, four bases, lots of gas coming in, all that kind of cool jazz. So, um, it's, uh, you know, I think... For a Protoss player, personally, I would think the best way to go about dealing with mech is to boost up your upgrades as quickly as you can. And uh, as you can see, 
For the moment, Cheval has just got a very powerful, uh, mainly Robo army. He's now going to transition into some Sky Toss as well with the Tempest on the way. The Fleet Bacon, of course, allows us to get some uh, carriers out if need be. But uh, this this day and age, I mean, if if carriers weren't already dead, I think uh, it's, it's certainly in this particular style. The Tempest do a little bit better than the carriers because of the fact that uh, the carriers DPS, while very quick, it, it's sometimes not as it's it's just not as strong as Tempest. Are. Tempest can also deal with uh, battle cruisers. They can help out with uh, dealing with Thors because of the Thor long range. You can shoot them down a little bit. But uh, Tempest overall it just seemed to be a little bit of a better kind of uh, unit to have. So we can see now that uh, Chval is now sitting on four bases. Nice amount of gas coming in, which is always handy. You want to be able to crank out as many of those units as possible. What you do not want to do is walk into a big army like this. Got to be careful of those ghost EMPs. Dzinski, what are those ghosts doing? They did not get an EMP out. I'm a little bit surprised about that. But as we can see, he is uh, he's in a position here. He's just poked out. He wants to see what's going on. I'm going to scan forward. All right, where's that army going? Here it is. We'll keep an eye on that army. And that is something which uh, you can really really uh, augment in TVP is if you have a lot of command centers switch them over into orbitals uh, well obviously depending on how much money you have but you can switch them into orbitals and things like that and put yourself in a really good spot to just check out where the army is but Zazinski He's moving forwards. He set up the siege line here on the fourth base. He's going to keep an eye out to the side. We'll probably see a scan over there in a second. One thing which he does not have at the moment are any ravens. And ravens are very, very good at dealing with tempers. Why, you ask? Well, you can throw down a couple of point defense drones and they soak up the, temp uh, the tempers damage. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of funny to watch the uh, the old resonance coil get soaked up by a uh, by a point defense drone. But as you can see, the Tempest slowly able to move forward and take down some of these units. One thing which Javol hasn't really done here is he has not moved forward with his observer. The uh, of course the Tempest do have a very long range. It's even further than they can see. So one thing which uh, is always good for a Tempest using Protoss to do is to make sure that you do have full vision to give those Tempests good range on what they need to be shooting at. So we can see right now that Chival, he's sort of moving back and forth. You can sort of see there's this little area here that is, uh, actually we'll do it with that. There's this little area which he should be able to see right now, but he actually can't because he hasn't moved the Observer forwards. But what is going on here is just a slow methodical uh, siege, I guess. It's like the air siege tanks up against the the, uh, the ground siege tanks here. We can see that there will be a little bit of a warp in here for Chival. He's going to send in some zealots and a DT. In fact, they're going to move forward and try and take out some of these units. Charging forward are those zealots. They're going to be able to chomp down on a ghost and then a tank as well. I This is a kind of point where when the temp... Templar are out, a lot of Templar, and you've also got these Tempests slowly mowing down all the tanks. It becomes a very awkward situation here. So I would not be surprised if we actually see Zezinski move back maybe just a little bit so that he can uh, he can deal with the possible uh, the flanking attacks that are coming across and that he can also set up his fifth base. But we'll see. I mean, he's currently uh, he's trying to micro back and forth against the Templar. They're getting mashed apart. All oh, those Templar, they're currently still sitting on only plus one on their armor. Zezinski up to 2-2 two, two on his his upgrades right now, Chival has just basically completely forgotten about his upgrades. He's got his plus three to weapons, he's got his plus one to air attack, but I mean, you know, he should be able to uh, really get a large amount of units out, and as you can see, he's going to approach from the side. The Zealots at the front getting torn apart by the Blue Flame Hellions there, just marching through. The, even the Templar uh, moving forwards and just getting annihilated. The Ghost CMP really helping out there. Here come a couple of the Hunter Seeker missiles out from the uh, from the Ravens, even uh, sacrificing themselves for the good of the cause there, it seems. But uh, overall, Dzinski takes out the majority of his opponent's army, down to 24 supply in the army there is uh, Chval. Meanwhile, Dzinski still sitting up at 92 supply, 158 total supply here for our Terran player, and uh, one little Hellbat is going to get a lot of damage done. We can see the worker kill tally up to 29, not too bad at all for our Terran player, but uh, he was forced to come back home for a minute. We're going to be getting out some more Thors. This is the little bit of a switch here from the Terran player. What you'll see from this point forward is slowly moving into these much more powerful uh, sort of end game units here. The Ravens, the Thors, and then uh, possibly into some BCs. I would assume they're coming up pretty soon as well. Uh, yeah, this is there is starport so that he is able to get out those ravens and also some Vikings as well We can see that uh, at the moment there is no fusion core just yet, but uh, he will be getting that out very soon But Chival, what's he gonna do from here? Well, 
there's a few options. I mean, you're down in supply, you are uh, you were effectively down on bases for a short while there. I would love to see the upgrades restart again. I mean, of course, we're still waiting for some extra armor upgrades. We've got plus two to air weapons coming out. Extra star ports, I mean, he's banking up quite a lot right now. Could be cranking out a lot more Tempest, a lot more, uh, you know, some more... I, like, that's the thing about mech, this is why we were speaking about uh, dealing with it earlier rather than later, is that when it gets to this kind of point, when the Terran player has their Ravens to block out the Tempest, when they've got their Vikings to shoot down Colossi and the Tempest and possibly even Void Rays, you're starting to get a lot of Thors out. These guys, you do, cannot underestimate Thors in their high impact payload mode if they switch over. Oh, there you go. Alright, cool, thank you. They do um, they do that 28 damage with 10 range, so they are able to get in uh, pretty close up against things like the Tempest and the Carriers and that kind of stuff, and do quite a lot of damage to them. So this is why we were talking about uh, dealing with the Mech Army a lot sooner rather than later, because you move into this position here, they start to become, it starts to become a very, very troublesome thing to deal with here. And uh, as you can see, Chival is going to grab another base here, picking up his fifth base is, uh, just across to the side. I think that's a bit of a... That's a risky base to take, and it looks like Dozinski is going to capitalize on that, still sitting up at 138 supply of his army, that is. Uh, maxed down at 200, so we can't actually make anything else here. But as you can see, across the opposite side of the map, we're going to get some Archons in here. These guys are very, very powerful against mech, but once again, as the Immortals do, they suffer from lack of, uh, well, you know... They're kind of a, if they're a ghost, you're in trouble kind of unit in a way, just because of the EMPs. If, if the Archons lose their, their shields, then they're in a whole lot of trouble. They only have tw uh, 10 health. They need to, you know, eat more healthy because they're a little bit, uh, they're a bit bulky, but don't actually have much strength to them. But here we go. Terra player now moving up. Zizinski is going to set up some point defense drones to soak up all of those, uh, all of the Tempest shots. Now, this is once again a little bit of a situation where Chvolt doesn't have complete vision of what's going on. And now, at this point, you can't even send in any observers to get some better vision for you because of the Vikings, the Ravens are there, the Thors are here as well, and uh, it just becomes a very, very tough spot to deal with. So we have a position where our mech army is all stationed out here, has some easy shots on the Nexus, but there is basically a zone of exclusion for any ground units because they will get absolutely pulverized here if they decide to move in. So if uh, Jvol wants to move in, he has to be extremely careful right now. The point defense drone slowly, slowly chewing up all of those Tempest shots, the Vikings will move forward. Zizinski only has uh, three Vikings here, a little bit surprised about that, but slowly but surely down goes the Nexus, and that means that our uh, Terran player is of course up on bases right now. Again, Chvol, we're still waiting on some more upgrades, more production facilities here. He is starting to really uh, lose some of that bank that he has, but if this was out a little bit earlier, he'd have a few more Tempests. But uh, out come the Hunter Seeker missiles for our Terran player. Here they go, dropping down on some of the Immortals. One and a two taking down the shields of those Immortals, and uh, if they move in too close, they are going to get pulverized. Zuzinski uh, now up to 3-2 on his upgrades. His opponent, Javolt, still sitting on 1-1-3. A little bit uh, wonky with those upgrades right now, but... Um, and this is where, you know, this kind of style here from Zizinski really starts to come into effect. Extra uh, command centers going down. We'll see that uh, his work account is currently sitting at 57. What this, what will happen with this very soon is he'll probably drop that down just a little bit. You want to have that maybe at around about sort of the 30 to 40 mark. It's very dependent on the player. I see like a lot of the mech players like uh, HDO Mario, Zizinski, um, of course, uh, Breach over from, uh, over in Hungary. And, um... Uh, who are the, some of the other mech players? Oh, of course, Goody. You know, you see Goody still mecking every now and then. They sort of, they sort of differ in their styles of how to play mech, and uh, there's, I think this, it's a really interesting facet of this particular style in this particular matchup. Is people will, they change the way they go about it be, just because of the various things that can come up. But Zazinski has done a wonderful job just uh, picking off a couple of the tempers. They're very nicely done, utilizing the terrain. Stalkers blinking across, trying to get in range of those Vikings. But I mean, now Zazinski has his max down army. He's going to prepare some more command centers. What these are for? What, what are these for, you say? Well, you need them for some uh, mules. Just dropping them down. Sacrifice some of these SCVs to free up supply. You can build more units, such as the uh, the Vikings, the Thors, and the Ghosts, and those sorts of important things. And then that, what that means is that you can still use your mules to drop down on the mining bases to uh, pick up that extra little bit of minerals there. As you can see, Zizinski coming across towards the top side of the map, but he has been caught out. The big Protoss army now 
now marching forward. Still very low on the upgrades right now. Keep in mind, this is the 33 minute mark and Chival still is yet to grab the plus two or even three. I, I, he should be on plus three by now with uh, armor and shield upgrades, but uh, unfortunately he has uh, not been able to finish that up. As you can see, his gas is mined out at the natural, the main, and the third is starting to get a little bit dry as well. Only a couple of hundred gas left over in this third base here for Chival. So things are really starting to take a turn for the worse for our Protoss player here. We'll see if he's gonna be able to uh, make some sort of fight back, but I mean, when the Terran player starts to move into a Raven count here, once it gets to around about sort of 10, 12, even higher, it becomes a really tough to actually deal with this kind of army. Ravens are ridiculously powerful when you get to the late stage of the game. And it's something that I talk about quite a lot when we do cast these longer games, is you say, well, at the late game stages, you start to mine out. You start to lose all of your gas. You start to lose all of your minerals, all these things down here. And, you know, your natural's gone, your third's gone, all these kinds of things. But wait, we do have a very big battle here. Zizinski kind of caught out. His army was completely on siege. Hunter Seeker missiles will go down. I think we did see a couple of EMPs. The Immortals are just trashing everything here, though. Look at the power of those guys as they just blast through everything. He started stepping forwards. It looks as if Zizinski is going to have the last laugh, though, with a few of those Hunter Seekers. The ghosts, of course, out to the side. Uh, and it looks like, well... That's going to be a uh, quite a quite a bit of a comeback there for the Protoss player Chival. He's going to be able to get some more uh, units out very soon. We can see that he's actually. Why is he not building any units? He's struggling to build a few units at this point. I'm not really sure what the plan is for our Protoss player, but I would love to see a few more Stargates building up the unit count. We've currently got, uh, you know, six of the Tempests already out, which is quite nice, but you do need to have the ground army as well for some protection. You need to be able to feed back Ravens if possible. You need to be able to throw down some Storms on Vikings, all these kinds of things. And this is the point, as I was just uh, speaking about before, before we were rudely interrupted by a big battle, is that late game energy becomes a crucial factor. If you can drop down point defense drones to keep your army alive, if you can drop down Hunter Seeker missiles to do the damage instead of using mineral based uh, uh, mineral based damage, then that means you're going to have a much more efficient time and a much better time in the late game of StarCraft 2. As you can see, Zuzinski, look at that, just not taking any damage from those stalkers. The uh, the Planetary Fortress able to do some more damage here. Ghost coming out. I'm not sure what this guy is doing. He's a little bit happy. Not anymore, though. But uh, finally, Chaval is able to pick up a fifth base here. We'll need to see that extra gas coming in. He is starting to get a little bit low right now. But, um, you know, this is a, this is a bit of a, an interesting point here for our Protoss player. He needs to get some damage done. He needs to take out the fifth base of Zerzinski. As you can see, look at that. Zero workers here, but a hell of a lot of mules, which is... Quite, uh, quite funny to see. Lots of or orbitals dropping down their mules as quickly as they can. Javol is now grabbing some more Tempest. We can see that uh, still waiting on a couple more upgrades for these guys as well. Just uh, like, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, the ground army is generally going to get uh, quite pulverized in a fight with a mech army. But it's still nice to be able to have them stick around a lot longer. It's, it's of course, you know, a logical thing that your Immortals are going to get EMP'd, meaning that their shields don't really count too much. But if you can get their armor up as well, then that can really help out. But Chival is going to move forward. He's going to try and be a little bit mobile with his army right here as he attempts to take a base across on the bottom side of the map. Zizinski is going to come across with his Ravens and drop down some of those very pesky auto turrets here. We'll see if they can knock out that base before too much uh, of a hassle comes about. One DT is going to be able to protect this position for now, but the army of Zizinski is now moving into a little bit of a different stage right now. We can see the Raven count starting to get very high. Thor's up at eight of them in total. 14 Vikings, a couple of siege tanks on the ground, not too many, and then uh, still a few of those Hellbats out. I'm a little bit surprised to see the Hellbats, but I mean, they are still very powerful if you can uh, use them as tanking measures, but uh, Zizinski unfortunately losing a couple of his Ravens there, but that's all right. He got a couple of Hunter Seekers off. Wow! Those were some beautiful hits there on those uh, on those Templar and the Immortals. If you can, if you're trying to target Hunter Seekers, try and throw them on Immortals. They're very slow, or of course the Templar, which are even slower. That they can't. I, I'm pretty sure they they can't actually get out of range of a Hunter Seeker in the uh, in the allotted time. But either way, as we can see, 
Zerzinski is uh, finishing up this base here. The minerals are getting a little bit low. Of course, those mules just chewing into those minerals constantly, wrecking up all of the environment there. Got to be a little bit more environmentally conscious, Zerzinski. But uh, as you can see, the Tempest count now up to a total of eight. He's got a uh, he's got five immortals on the ground. We've got some stalkers here. The Templar are also out in force as well. It is always good to see them. There is still a mothership core, which has we haven't really seen her play too much of a a. a here in this match, but uh, I would like to see this switch into a mothership core. You can, uh, sorry, a mothership, I should say. Cloak, cloak, while of course there are a lot of ravens out, cloak can still be a little bit helpful. Sometimes if units lose their tracking on a target, if the ravens are a little bit, uh, if they're a little bit too far back, sometimes you can catch out some of the units. Not to mention, um, you know, you can uh, you can really help out with things like uh, the extra damage that the mothership does. But uh, we rarely ever get to see mothership these days. But as you can see, Zosinski almost maxed out yet again with his uh, huge flock of ravens, or is it a murder of ravens? I think it is. Um, <laughs> or is that crows? I can't remember. I think it's a murder of ravens. Yeah, I think so. Either way, what we're gonna see here is a little bit of uh, really. Weird kind of fight, Zazinski dropping down some Hunter Seekers, there go those two Templar, they also almost take an Immortal with them, but slowly what he's going to do is leap these uh, the tanks forward, you slowly want them to be able to cover the units on the ground to take out Immortals and Stalkers and Templar, and then what you can do is slowly move the Vikings forward to take out the Tempest, and then with the Raven support, the point defense drones, the Hunter Seeker missiles, you can slowly move up, and uh, that is what it looks like our Terran player is slowly starting to do here, if you can get those tanks in range of the Nexus, he can certainly put them in a position to smack down the, the opponent's economy. The Tempest are trying to do what they can, but the point defense drone is just ridiculously strong right now. There is a Tempest coming across, not sure what this guy is doing, he's late to the party. Hey guys, what's going on here? Gets smacked down by some uh, Thors and then some Vikings as well, but as you can see, Zazinski is slowly moving forwards. The SCV is repairing up some of his Thors as they do take on a little bit of damage. There is a Mothership Core throwing out a uh, Photon Overcharge. Unfortunately, a little bit late here, but Chavol always on the ball, blinking across, trying to take out some of the Vikings. The Tempest also here, throwing out some uh, some of their shots as well. I think maybe a Raven would be, uh, sorry, a uh, an Oracle would be nice to maybe get a little bit of a revelation going here, just so you can get a little bit better range on the uh, on the Terran army. But I mean, for the most part, Chival is uh, he's handling it in like you know a pretty decent way. But I mean, this is the problem when you reach this point of PVT when you are facing off against a mech opponent and they're very competent with the way they utilize all of their units here. Slowly but surely, that is our, uh, that is our Zerzinski here, as he has now removed that base, removed that threat, and you can bet your bottom dollar that he is now on the way up towards this base here as well. Point defense drones starting to lose a little bit of their energy there. They still shoot down a whole lot of the, uh, the Tempest shots there. What Prism is going to try and make its way down through the southern side of the map. Be very, very quiet. He's coming through. He's going to see what he can d get done. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to uh, get in there and get too much work done. There are a couple of turrets here, as we said earlier, protecting this position. And, uh, you know, a Venn diagram of, uh, of these uh, center towers around. Oh, wow. War Prism, extremely unlucky to uh, fall down there. But as you can see, Zuzinski, slow march forwards. Battlecruiser is out now as well. We'll probably see the Battlecruiser counts start to increase as the game moves on. What do you use these for, you say? They're extremely tanky. 3-3. 550 health, they've got their Yamato Cannon as well, or as I like to call it, the Tomato Cannon, able to throw down a lot of power and punch down the Tempest if they can, even if they're out of range, which is quite an interesting part of how Yamato works. But uh, Zuzinski, he's now going to move across, we've got a couple of spare command centers here, going to move across and lay down on that base. Get started with some mining there. Of course, you know, Zazinski, he's not exactly in uh, his best economic position either. I mean, he's starting to mine out all of his bases. We'll see a lot of mules drop down here at this uh, attempted... What is that? That's the sixth base, I guess. He's going to be able to pick that one up. And there you go, dropping down the mules with gusto is Zazinski, but uh, he is still slowly but surely pushing forwards, trying to deal with this uh, temper sum. Look at this guy. Look at this guy, he's chilling out, he's just having a smoke, and is being uh, assaulted by nine Tempests, and just doesn't actually care. Deal with it, he says. A Viking flying forwards, getting taken out by the Tempest. But, um, I, I'm sure a lot of the Protoss players are thinking, what do you do here? 
how do you deal with this? What what are you meant to do against the point defense drones, the uh, the hunter seekers, the Vikings, and all these kinds of things? Well, I, like I don't know. That's the thing. I mean, it gets to this point, and it just gets so hard to deal with this kind of army. The Vikings will slowly but surely lay waste to all of those tempests if they can get in range. The point defense drones soak up all the shots of the blink stalkers, and of course the tempests as well. But I mean, you know, it's it's not as if uh, Chaval has had uh, no errors in this game. Like, as I said before, I kind of feel like uh, not getting some of these upgrades earlier on has really, really affected him here. He's uh, suffering at the hands of the Vikings with their 3-3, the Thors with their own 3-3, their 30 damage on their Punisher cannons, down drops a nuke, taking out a Tempest, and also a... Uh, also a couple of the Templar that were there as well, but I mean... You know, this is a this is a point. This is this is kind of like if a, if a, if a Protoss player gets to like mass carriers or, or mass void rays or something like that. You know, just sort of those those situations where it just becomes this ridiculous unbeatable army, is that you know it gets very hard to deal with it. You know, you could make the argument possibly there could be some run buys up in here, but it did take a lot of time to take down these planetaries. And then what do you gain from that? You dr you. You know, cut down some of the gas income for the Terran. I mean, he's already maxed out. He doesn't really care at this point. He's got a uh, he's got a decent bank right now. Five thousand minerals, three thousand gas. Trying to blink out of there is Chival. I didn't know that blink actually uh, is not jointed. Hmm, okay, um, but the ghost now just moving forwards, trying to uh, check out what's going on. But uh, at this point, yeah, I mean, Cheval, we've had some issues with the upgrades. We're still sitting on uh, just the plus one for the armor this entire game. Like, I mean, you know, we have transitioned into the Sky Toss part of the game, but I mean, you still can get a couple of upgrades out to help out with Zealots and things like that. But uh, here we go. I think Dzinski is now slowly on the move. The tanks are moving into range of some of these, uh, moving into the range of some of the buildings in just a moment there. But he's uh, still just mining away calmly. Dropping down a couple of mules here. You know, we're gonna watch the uh, the income tab just jump up in a second here. Watch this; it'll go from like zero to a thousand or something like that in half a second. There you go, bam. But uh, as you can see, Zizinski mowing down all the temp the tempests that are out. We've now only got two tempests out for our Protoss player Chival. He's got a lot of uh, workers that are not doing anything at the moment. All the gas is mined down. He can't really go anywhere. He's looking to take another base up at the top side of the map here. But now, as we see, he said, all right, screw it. I'm not going to be able to keep this base. The tanks are too much. The Thors are too much. The Ravens are a bit ridiculous with their point defense drones. And uh, Zizinski will take over another base over on the left-hand side of the map here. And uh, Chival, his last bastion of hope here, is now moving up towards the top edge of the map at the 12 o'clock position. Zazinski is actually mined out here, so he's not, uh, I don't think he'd be too, you know, uh, worried about contesting this position. But if he can uh, just get in here and get some really good damage done, then he could certainly finish up the game right now. But uh, slowly but surely, Zazinski is making his way across the map. His uh, Raven, Viking, Thor, Tank, and Hellbat army is on the way. A single battlecruiser, just as the commander in the back line there, is going to come across. Out come the point defense drones. Ravens, they've got a huge amount of energy left over. Beautiful storms from Chval, just trying to cut down some of the health on that army. But I mean, when you've got the uh, 160 health tanks, you've got the Thors with their 400 health, what are you going to do? There is a nice, another little storm there, but uh, this is not going to happen for Chval. In comes the very tanky kind of army from Zizinski, and down goes Chival. What a crazy game. This is the kind of really interesting uh, mech game that you have where it's slow but methodical but extremely tactical and complex when you break it down and kind of look at the various things that happen. But uh, really great game here from the Terran Stream of the Month, Zazinski. You can catch him over on Twitter, Twitch, and uh, if you would like, please leave some comments, subscribe to my channel here, and I'll catch you all next time. Here. As you can see, 47 damage to bio units and then the 34 damage against other standard targets. His storms have also been wonderful, just spreading them out across the battlefield, doing really, really nicely there. And uh, for Minigun, he's been sticking with a very a much more